All right, in this next delicious video, we go over the sum function in SQL Server. It's actually, what I'm about to show you, it's the same thing if you use Oracle, DB2, uh, MySQL, whatever. It's the same thing. It's all part of the specification. And the sum function is really handy. We're going to look at it by itself. We're going to look at it with group by. And then, of course, we're going to look at it with an analytical function or a window function, meaning partition by. Okay, very important. You have to know how to use that for the SQL interview or you will not get hired. So anyway, we're going to go through that. Um, I have seven different queries to show you and we're going to be comparing what happens with each of them. So you may notice that in some cases I have some really weird spacing going on, but that'll make sense in about two seconds when you see two queries together. So everything lines up. All right, before we get started, you know the drill. If you like this video, please smash that like button. If you love the video and think I'm hilariously funny looking, then please go ahead and subscribe. Don't worry, you'll never see me. Uh, so let's get started. Let's dive right in. We're going to select uh, empl employee, department, and salary from this emp table. Okay? Typical table. We've got the employee, we've got the department, we've got the salaries. Some people are in the same department, obviously. The, the names and the departments are all over the place. Uh, hey, look at this guy. He makes a quarter million a year. Woohoo! He's in software. That's why you want to get a really good software job. Okay. All right. So now, let's start doing some fun stuff with some. Well, the most basic thing you could do is just pick a field from the table, and since you're calling it some salary, you need to give it another name. You don't have to. If you don't give it a name, here's what will happen, actually. Let me... Oh, but by the way, see see how... See why I have this... Oh, let me get rid of one of these spaces. See how I have it lined up so the from, in, the from emp is in the same place all the time? That's why I do that. Let me get rid of this. But let me just keep it like this. If I go like this, it's just going to get the sum. It's going to add together all the salaries in the table. But see, it gives it this no column name. You know, and it's basically making fun of you. It's like if you don't get the options on the dashboard, it puts like a little thing there that doesn't have anything in it to show all your friends you were too cheap and couldn't afford it. Okay, so anyway, well, we can afford this. So we go like this, and now everything's the same, but now it says some sal, because we said some sal. So we're just giving it a name. All right, let me get rid of this because it's irritating me now. All right. Let me go to the next one and show you what we're going to do. This is going to throw an error. SQL, the way it's designed in the specification, this isn't a problem with SQL Server. This is the, and it's not a really a problem. It's just you have to understand it. This is the design within the SQL specification itself. If I go like this, watch the error that comes back. Column emp emp, you know, employee table emp for employee, is invalid in the select list, meaning this list, because it is not contained in either a, an aggregate function. By the way, sum salary, when, when we're put, using sum on something, that's called an aggregate function. Aggregates are like sum, count, min, max, that kind of stuff, because it's doing something to multiple like versions, instances of the same value in different records, the same field in different records. Um, or it's not so it's not in an aggregate function or in the group by clause. Well, we don't have a group by clause, so no kidding. It's not you know it's not going to work. So all right, so let's just get rid of this. All right, comment it out. See you later. Have a nice day. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to this time. Actually, let me keep this there so everything's lined up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both the department. Okay, the department and the sum salary from emp. But see, this one gave us an error, so how do we get out of the error? Well, well, we're not picking the employee or the salary. We're just adding the department, but we have the department in what's known as the group by clause. Now, look at how cool this is. Get a load of this. If you've never seen this before, you're going to think it's magic. And if you have seen it, it's still magic because, hey, it's us. So what it does is it takes every department, one after the other. It even puts them in order for you. You didn't have to tell it to do that. It just did it because it's nice. And it gives you the total 
of each department. So advertising is costing 109,000 a year. That's kind of scary. They should Well, that's not that's not what it's costing for advertising. That's what it's costing to pay the people in advertising. <laughs> the cafeteria people have more salary. <laughs> that should tell you where everybody's priority is at. HR, legal. Look at the sales guys. Man, I don't know how many people are in the sales department by looking at this, but yeah, they're getting a chunk of money. Okay. So that's how that works. Group by and there's always at least one group by question in every interview, so you just have to kind of know how it works, and you have to probably be able to think on your feet, because they're always going to ask you one little thing that you didn't think of, like, all right, here's what this looks like, but how would you do that? So just get comfortable with it. Now, let me show you something that wouldn't help you. Okay, this is cool. We did the department, you know, we grouped by the department with the salary. Well, now I want to add employee. Well, in order for it to not get an error, I have to add amp over here in the group by. But see, this is going to kind of ruin it, because watch this. Let, let's do both of these together. There's probably not going to be enough room for this, because I have these tiny little windows open. Let me just pull this up like this. This is what we looked at a minute ago, but see, this is the next one. Now, look at this. This top one only has nine rows, but this bottom one has 38 rows. Why? Because now that it's grouping it by department and employee, so notice it's, it's, um, it's ordering it by employee, it's just taking each employee and their department and just their salary. See, it's getting the total of everything in the software department if your name is Alexander Romanoff. So really what this is doing, this isn't really that different other than the order of the records than when we just did this, you know, w without doing any kind of a group by. So when we do this group by, so you have to be careful with group by. See, if you add too many fields to it, too many columns, it, it doesn't really help you. And see, that's the limitation of group by. See, this, this is great to do a quick down and dirty report for somebody. They're just like, you know, they just want to see every department. Give me the total. I'm done. That's fine, but if they want you to add more fields, then group by sort of loses its ability to be useful and to be helpful. And this is why, if you really want to make the big money, you have to know how to use an analytical function. By the way, if I ever say analytical query or window query, that's incorrect. What I'm really trying to say is analytical function or window function. And by the way, for the sake of argument, an analytical function and a window function are the same thing. By the way, don't say Windows function. That's a mistake. Windows is an operating system, okay? Or things that my friends clean because they have window cleaning businesses. A window function is a function in SQL that's really powerful. An analytical function is the same thing. But you could argue that it's not really a window function until you use partition by, and I'll show you that in a second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select emp department and salary and the sum of the salary from emp but I'm going to use this really slick thing called over and then partition by department with an embedded by emp well let's just back up the truck for a minute do you see this part that says partition by department that partition pie is what really creates the windows of records. Think of a window as a rectangular thing on the side of a building, which is usually, but not always, a bigger rectangular thing. Well, a record set is a building, and little parts of records or sections of records, think of them as windows. It's a window function. Watch what this does. This is going to blow your mind, okay? Okay, so... Look at what it did. First of all, it's grouping everything by department. Here's everybody in advertising. Here's their salary. Now look, it's ordering it by the employee, Dina Bobina, Ida Arita, Jeannie McMeany, and Jeannie McSweeney. Uh, okay. So it does that, and then it starts over again. Oh, there's a lot of Jennies and Genies in here. What was I thinking? Now we have the cafeteria, but look at what it does in this column. Did you notice this? Did you notice 
that when it comes to the salary, the first one is 18000 but it doesn't have the sum of everybody in this department. It just has the sum of the first record. But look at this. We get to the second record, and it's 32000 okay? But what is the sum of the, the first record and the second record? What's the sum of 18000 and 32000 Well, it's 50000 Boom. You come down here. Now, what's the... What's the sum of 18,000, 32,000, and 27,000? Boom, 77,000. See, what it does is it totals everything in the advertising department, but what it does is it gives you a running total. It's not, it doesn't just say 109,000 in all four of these. You could write a query to do that, but it's much cooler to have a running total. The reason why it's a lot cooler is because if you know how to do this, you will be able to pass one of the questions that they are bound to ask you on an interview. It's also nice to know how to do this in real life, but we won't go into real life, real world examples because everybody's situation is different. You just need to know how to do it, okay? But now look what happens with cafeteria. The odometer, that's a, an American car term for, like, how many miles the cars went, it turns over, it starts over. They usually start over at 100,000 unless they're electronic. Uh, but the old sort of analog ones would start over at 100,000. So who's going to drive a car that far? <laughs> I do, like, every few months at my job. Ooh. So here, here it starts over again, 31,000 and 31,000. But now, what do you do when you add 31 and 23 together? Well, you get 54,000. What happens when you add all three of these numbers? You get this number. What happens when you add all four of these numbers? You get that number. And then we come down, uh, hey, how you doing? Ah, been chilling, been chilling. <laughs> Jingling, Connie Giuliani. See, look, and here's the thing. It starts over, 81,000, 81,000. Add these two together, 157. Add these three to get, wow, it's exactly 200,000. Wow, it's like winning the lottery. So basically, that's how it works, okay? Um, if you have any questions, you can raise your hand. I won't see you, but you can always leave a comment. Let me know what you think. And don't forget to hit the like button. Um, it makes me think you like me. Uh, feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. Feel free to unsubscribe if you think I'm an idiot. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Oh, I almost made it over the finish line. Don't you hate when that happens? Boy, that's embarrassing. All right, well, I'll talk to you later. Have fun coding. Go make some money. Bye-bye.